This video will be about solving multi-step equations. So when you're solving multi-step equations, you'll need two, two skills, um, combining like terms and distribution. When you're combining like terms, you look for things that have the same letter. So like 3x and 2x could combine together. Or if we added like a 5 on the end, 7 and 5 don't have any letters, so they are also like terms. So 3x and 2x are like terms because they have the exact same letter. 7 and 5 are like terms because they don't have any letters. So there's combining like terms. You'll also need to be able to distribute. And so when you have parentheses and this outside number is used twice, you do 2 times x to get 2x, and 2 times negative 5 to get negative 10. So both these skills will be used. So let's say we have 4x plus 3 minus 2x equals 11. So our equal sign splits this into two sides, everything to the left of the equal sign, everything to the right. We look for anything on the left that can simplify. So that could be combining or that could be distribution. So on the left, I do have two like terms, the 4x and the negative 2x, those could combine together. Because they're on the same sides, you're not going to do opposites. I am not going to do like plus 2x because you can't add the same thing to both sides. I don't know why it kind of wigged out for a second. So we can't do that. All we do is just combine them. 4x minus 2x is 2x. We bring down the 3. We also look on the right side for any like terms. There is only one number, so no like terms. And now we can start doing our opposites once everything is simplified. So remember, when you do your opposites, you look for the plus or minus first. It's almost always the piece you have to move first. So opposite of add 3 was minus 3. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. So that leaves us with 2x equal to 8. 11 minus 3 is 8. And then that's really 2 times x, so the opposite is division. So now we're left with x, because 2 divided by 2 cancels. That would give you 1, but you don't have to write a 1 in front of a variable. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So now your like terms may be on the left side. They can also be on the right side, and you still would go through that same process. So we'd still say, OK, equal sign splits this into two sides. Is there anything on the left side to simplify? This time, the left side has nothing to simplify. Then we go to the right side. We again have two variables. 2x and 6x. You do not do opposites because they are on the same side. I always think same side, same signs. You use whatever signs were already there. Opposite sides, opposite signs. So positive 2 and positive 6 added together is positive 8x. Now we can start doing our opposites. We always choose to move stuff away from the letter so since variable is on the right side, we want to move this negative 3 away, which means we have to add 3 to both sides. 5 plus 3 is 8. We bring down the 8x. And again, that's really 8 times x. So we divide. 8 divided by 8 is 1. So we're on this side, we just cancel them. Even though that really is 1x, the reason we don't write the 1 is because we do have the variable left. But on this side, in order to have an answer, we had to write the 1 in. So this can also be applied to word problems. So let's say a gardener is planning a rectangular garden area in a community garden. His garden will be next to an existing 12-foot fence. So we know we already have a 12-foot fence and that we're going to make a rectangle with it, a rectangular garden. The gardener has a total of 44 feet of fencing to build the other three sides of his garden. How long will the garden be if the width is 20? Oops, I don't know why I put 23 here. That should have said 12. 
if the width is that 12 feet of the existing fence. So when you have a rectangle, the sides across from each other are the same, so this would also be 12. But then we don't know the other two sides. We don't know the length. When we don't know something, we assign it a variable. Both of these will be x. So we don't need to use this purple 12 because that fence already exists. It's already there. So the 44 feet of fencing is only going to apply to these black sides. So we can ignore that 12 feet and we can say, well, I know these three sides added together, x plus 12 plus the other x, those should equal the amount of fencing I have. I have 44 feet of fencing. So now we have our equation set up, we can go and solve it using what we've done so far. The left side does have like terms. We have a 1x and another 1x that can combine together. 1x plus 1x is 2x. And now we do our opposites. Opposite of adding 12 is minusing 12. That's 32. And then that's 2 times x, so the opposite is dividing by 2. So x equals 16. Um, and you can always double check, make sure that makes sense. If these two sides were 16, 16 plus 12 is 28, plus another 16 is 44. That's how much fencing we had. So we've done a lot of the combined like term types of problems. Let's look at a distribution problem. So looking at this, we now have parentheses. We still have a left side and a right side. So let's take care of the parentheses first. We multiply this in. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 2 is positive 6. Now after we've done the distribution step, we may still have some like terms. 6 and 4 can combine together. They are like terms. Again, same side of the equal sign means you keep whatever signs they are. So just positive 6 plus 4 is positive 10. And now we can start doing our opposites. Opposite of adding 10 is minusing 10. And opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. So along with these skills of doing combining like terms and distribution, they may also throw in some problems that involve fractions and involve decimals. So let's say we have 2x divided by 3 plus x divided by 2 equal to 8. So now when we have problems with fractions in them, the easiest way to do this is to get rid of the fractions. We don't like working with fractions. That's hard to deal with. You could, if you are confident in your fraction skills, you could combine like terms and find a common denominator. But I think the easiest way is to get rid of the denominators completely. So since we're dividing by 3, our opposite would be timesing by 3. Now because we're doing this at kind of a weird part, we're not moving stuff around or combining like terms, when we times by 3, we have to times everything by 3. Here, they'd cancel because they're opposites. Here, they would not cancel, so we have 3x over 2. And here, we have 8 times 3 is 24. So now we're going to do this a second time to get rid of this fraction. So this time, we would multiply by 2. Again, wherever you multiply, you have to multiply by everything. So now we have 2x times 2 is 4x. The 2's cancelled, leaving the 3x behind. And 20 ti 24 times 2 is 48. Once we've get gotten rid of the fractions, now it's similar to the problems we've already done. On the left side, we do have some like terms. 4 plus 3 is 7x. And then we can divide both sides by 7. Now this time, 48 divided by 7 would come out as some weird random decimal. Um, 
6.85714, and then it keeps going. So we could use the decimal, or they may want us to find the mixed fraction. Right now, this is an improper fraction that cannot reduce. There's nothing that divides into both 48 and into 7. So if we want to make a mixed number, we say, okay, how many times does 7 go into 48? Well, the closest whole number is 6 times. So 6 times 7 was 42. We're going to take that away from the numerator of the fraction. 48 minus 42 is positive 6. So this is 6 because 7 divided into 48 6 times. And then you had a remainder of 6 over that denominator still of 7. So 48 sevenths is the same as 6 and 6 sevenths. They could also involve decimals. And again, our best strategy is going to be to get rid of the decimals. We're either going to multiply by 10, 100, 1,000. We decide which one to multiply by by the highest number of decimal places. We have one decimal place here, one decimal place here, and two decimal places here. Since there are two decimal places, we are going to use two zeros. So we will times everything by 100 because that will get rid of the decimals for us. 0 0.23 times 100 ends up being 23x. Basically, it moves the decimal two spots to the right. 0 0.4 times 100 is 40. Again, it moves it two spots to the right, but you need to fill in that blank space with a zero. And 1.5 times 100 is 150. So again, once you've gotten rid of the decimals, now it's a normal equation. This time, we don't even have like terms to combine. I don't have parentheses on either side, so no distribution. Um, I don't have any like terms over here, so I just do opposites, minus 40 from both sides. 23x equals 110. Divide by 23 from both sides. Now this one, since we started out with decimals, they will probably want the answer as a decimal. So we'd get 4.782 and it would keep going. Usually they want you to round to the tenths place, so one decimal place. Um, that number is currently a 7. Next to it is an 8. That means instead of staying a 7, it's going to go up to an 8. They could have asked you to round to the hundredths or thousandths um, or ten thousandths. Usually it would never be more than ten thousandths, but most often it's just to the tenths. So the skills you'll need are to combine like terms, be able to distribute, to get rid of fractions if they give you a problem with fractions, or to get rid of the decimals if they give you a problem with decimals. So that concludes our discussion on solving multi-step equations.